Choosing Life by Ginny Rules 27, Chapter 33. And before I get started, guys, I'm in Disneyland Paris as I record this. I hope my joy goes into my reading. Carlos sighed as he brushed a bit of fur from his suit jacket, unknowingly mimicking the same actions that Mal had done before her own wedding. He couldn't believe the day was finally here. The day where two families would become one. The day where Jane would finally become his wife. You're nervous? Clay asked as he poked his head in. Diego and Roger Ratcliffe copying him. Carlos knew Roger was acting almost as a father of the groom. Even in his own mind, that role belonged more to Clay than it did to Roger. Not that he'd ever tell the musician that. He and Anita were kind enough to look after him, even be his guardians when he first arrived in Oradon. When they had been well in their rights to say no, they wanted nothing to do with him. Hell, they had offered their Dalmatian plantation up as a wedding venue for free. Something both Carlos and Jane accepted in a heartbeat, even though Carlos still had money from the sale of his mother's fashion empire's resources to Evie, and Evie making him a silent partner in Evie Four Hearts. He took 20% of the profits. Gil took another 20% as the first male seamster, which had allowed Evie to branch into Auradon male fashion, and Evie split the remaining 60% up evenly with Dizzy and Doug. Roger had said that family doesn't make family pay, and they were Carlos's family. A little, Carlos told Clay. Well, don't be, Clay said, even as everyone walked into the room. Everything's perfect. Even the weather's decided to be nice and have the humidity be non-existent today. A rarity for July. Your wedding is going off without a hitch. And then you'll be off on your honeymoon, doing things I don't need to think about my little brother doing. Carlos snorted in amusement, causing Clay to smile as he heard that. It honestly was amazing how much Carlos had changed over the years. And how much Clay wished he had been there to see it all for himself. His normally timid brother would never have stood up for himself. And yet... One of the first decisions Carlos had made about his wedding was that he was going to wear a black tux. The groomsmen can wear whatever colour they want, Carlos had told him, but my colours are red, white and black. And I'm tired of letting Freddy pervert my colour from beyond the grave. He's had his claim on it long enough. And Clay had to admit, his little brother looked good in black. Looking good, cuz, Diego chuckled. Jane's going to be gobsmacked when she sees you. Thanks, Carlos said with a small chuckle. Are you sure you're okay, Diego? Weddings can't be easy for single people. And if I was single, I'd be miserable. But suck it up for you. Plus, my band's playing. Diego said, just so happens I'm not single. She just has to stay on the aisle for a smaller reason. Well, actually, two smaller reasons. Clay frowned as he looked at his cousin. Yeah, it was still odd having family from his mother's side he could trust, but Carlos wanted Diego here, so Clay was going to make it happen. What do you mean? It's probably better to tell Gil this after the wedding, but... Lachlan's pregnant, Diego said, looking over his shoulder in case the best man walked in. Yisla wrote to me to let me know why she wasn't coming. And she doesn't trust Zevon or Maddie to not throw vials at Lachlan. And of course, Matt, Zevon's kid, might get in the crossfire. And Yisla adores that kid. I get it, Carlos said, giving his cousin a small smile, while trying to prevent himself from wondering who the father of Lachlan's kid was. After all, there were a few rats, Zevon, possibly the Gaston twins and the Stabbington cousins remaining on the aisle. I hope she's able to come over soon. I know it might be weird for someone who was a wolf rat to say, especially about the leader of the casters, but if she makes you happy, Diego, then I don't care. Diego gave Carlos a smile as he adjusted his blush red tie. Did your colours have to include blush? Hey, pink is one of Jane's colours, Carlos said, 
his smile growing at the thought of his bride to be. Besides, you can't clash with the bridesmaids. Oh no, perish for that. Harry snorted as he, Ben and Jay walked in, followed by a girl. We found the errant best man. And, seriously, Deville, Gil's your best man? Carlos shrugged, ignoring Harry's use of his last name. Honestly, he was pretty sure it was just a habit for the Scot at this point. Gil always looked out for me when we were on the aisle, and we were merely under protection. There's no one else I'd want as my best man. No offence, Clay, Diego. None taken. Clay chuckled as Gil gave Carlos a smile upon hearing his words. Diego shrugged, mimicking his cousin's movements. None taken. But come on, we should get you out there before your bride thinks you've run off. Meanwhile, over in the bridal area, Jane smiled as she looked at herself in the mirror. Evie, once again, had worked her magic and created a one-of-a-kind dress. At first glance, it might have seemed simple. Just a scoop neck, floor-length dress with sleeves of chiffon that made Jane feel like she was wearing a cloud. But to Jane, it was a dress made for a queen. No, made for a fairy. Oh, honey, Fairy Godmother said, coming into the room. Janie, you look beautiful. Thanks, Mum, Jane said, giving her mum a small smile at the old nickname. You're not mad, are you? That Evie made the dress, I mean. I know dresses are kind of what you do, but... Now you listen to me, Jane. I could never be mad at you. Fairy Godmother told her, not for choosing a dress that makes you feel happy, and especially not for choosing a wedding dress that makes you happy. Jane smiled and gently brushed a stray bit of hair out of her eyes. Thanks, Mum. But would you mind terribly if I added a bit of extra sparkle to it? Fairy Godmother asked, pulling out her wand. I know, I know, there are sequins, but I was thinking more bibbity in terms of sparkle. Consider it my something borrowed. Mum, Jane said, her voice soft yet touched at the same time. Fairy Godmother didn't respond, but instead waved her wand over her daughter, and a light stream of magic spread over the dress almost looking as if Jane had been given pixie dust on her dress. Speaking of pixie dust, Queen Clarion is here? Jane asked. She is. She just arrived from Pixie Hollow, Fairy Godmother nodded, and she is incredibly honoured to be your officiant, Jane. With all of your options. Jane sighed softly, as her mother gently adjusted the leaf pin in her hair that held her veil in place. If Jane was honest... It almost resembled the laurel crowns the Olympian tourney team would play when Auradon Prep would play against them. Of course they took them off when it came time to wear their helmets. Safety first, even for godlings. I know I had my fair share of options for officiants, she said after a moment. I could have gone with Mal, with Ben, with Uma. Hell, I could have asked you. You officiated Chad's wedding, after all. I just... Mum, I love you. I always will. But the idea of my mother being the officiant of my wedding... I understand, Fairy Godmother said, gently resting her hand on Jane's shoulder. You don't have to explain your decisions to me, Janie. I'm not the one getting married. I know, Jane nodded. But you're still my mum. I don't want there to be hard feelings between us. Jane, know this... There will never be hard feelings between us, Fairy Godmother said. And if I've ever made you feel like you can't talk to me about something, then, my darling daughter, I am so sorry. I would never want you to think me so egotistical that I'd be upset for not officiating my daughter's wedding. I know fairies have a reputation for having somewhat of an ego, but I don't think I'm that bad. Jane couldn't help but giggle as she heard that, putting a smile on Fairy Godmother's face. Thanks, Mum, Jane said softly. And that was one of the reasons why I wanted Queen Clarion as my officiant. 
I wanted that tie to my Faye background. I wanted the wedding to be a blending of both Carlos and my backgrounds. Dalmatian Plantation as the venue, Queen Clarion as my officiant. Your father walking you down the aisle? Lumiere's voice came from the doorway, and both Jane and Fairy Godmother turned to him. Mon Dieu! Jeanne, you look magnifique! Merci, Papa, Jane said with a small smile. Lumiere gently held out his arm, and Fairy Godmother gave a small kiss on Jane's cheek before scurrying out to her seat. Jane's smile grew as she wrapped an arm around his and quickly grabbed her bouquet of irises and roses before they started to make their way down the aisle. Jane felt her smile grow even more as she saw Carlos at the end of the aisle, the sun shining in his black and white hair. Gail standing next to Carlos as the best man. Sorry you're not walking down with Jay, she whispered to Lonnie, who was in front of her as matron of honour. Don't be, Lonnie whispered back. Besides, I know Evie won't do anything. I think you picked the perfect pairings of groomsmen and bridesmaids, by the way. Evie with Jay, Kitty with Ben, Rose with Harry. Thanks, but I can't take all the credit there. It was Carlos's idea. You're marrying a genius, I hope you know. I know, Jane said as she reached the end of the aisle, and all secretive conversation had to stop. She did give a smile to little Elliot Hood and Gwen Valisas, the ring bearer and flower girl, aka Roland and Kitty's son, and Macaria and Gil's daughter. Yes, Gil took Macaria's last name, or at least the last name she used when she had to have legal documents in Oridon. Godlings really didn't have last names, after all, but Gil had told Jane once that he'd rather take Macaria's last name and be part of a family that loved and respected each other than have Macaria take his last name and be a part of a family that, well, didn't. Oh, don't get her wrong. Jane knew that Gil's sisters all loved and respected each other. It was the other three legume men that were the issue. Je t'aime, ma fille chérie, Lumiere whispered as he gently kissed the top of Jane's head, pulling Jane out of her thoughts as she realised Carlos was holding his hand out to her. Je t'aime aussi, papa, Jane said back, kissing his cheek and ignoring the few gasps that emerged as the guests heard that. Jane was never really sure why her parents kept their marriage a secret. Maybe it was due to her father's closeness with King Ben, Maybe it was because her mother's position at Oradon, Brab. But clearly it didn't matter anymore. Welcome, everyone. Please be seated, Queen Clarion said, drawing the attention of the shocked wedding guests. As the guests took their seats, Queen Clarion spoke once more. I know it brings both Jane and Carlos more joy than they can say to know that you all could join them and be here on this special day. A day filled with happiness and love and peace. Some of the most precious values of fairy and fae kind. To some, marriage may seem unimportant. A simple piece of paper. But it is so much more than that. It is a promise. A promise to stand by the person you have chosen through all winters, springs, summers and falls of your joined lives. A promise to stand with your partner and never forsake them, no matter whether separated by distance or if one of you is stuck with a broken wing. A promise to receive and give the most precious of gifts, trust and love to each other. Now, Carlos and Jane have written their own vows which they are going to read before us today. Jane smiled as she gently rested her hands in Carlos's, Lonnie already taking her bouquet. Carlos, if you had asked me how I pictured my wedding when I was a little girl, I probably wouldn't have been able to answer, let alone describe this magical day, because I never really pictured my wedding back then. And then you came into my life. You managed to make a plain Jane feel beautiful and special for just being herself, and I will always love you for it. 
I may have been born part fae, but you're the one who brought out the real magic in me. I vow to always be there for you, to listen to your day and be a shoulder to lean on should you need it. It was Carlos's turn to smile as it was his turn to speak. Jane, I know I'm likely going to sound like every VK who's gotten married in Oridon, so I apologise there. But if you had asked me when I was younger to imagine my wedding day, I would have thought you crazy because I could never imagine a day like this or that I'd be marrying someone as amazing as you. Back on the aisle, the days were filled with fear and worry for my allies, cousin and siblings. Love? It was just a four letter word and a feeling I was lucky enough to get a tiny taste of from Clay, Diego and Ginny. But I didn't know its true meaning until we started dating. Your love is a gift I will never take for granted. And I know I can't give you forever, in the literal sense, like the gods and our immortal friends can. But I can promise you our forever. And that starts today. And you know, if you had asked anyone who knew me on the aisle, They'd say I spent a lot of time running from Cruella. But what I didn't realise at the time was that I was running to you. Please bring forth the rings, Queen Clarion said with a smile, as the guests seemed to awe at Carlos's last line. Elliot toddled over, the rings resting on a black and pink spotted pillow. Carlos, please repeat after me, Queen Clarion said after both Carlos and Jane had taken a ring from the pillow. Jane, please accept this ring as a symbol of my love for you above all others. It is my promise that wherever our journey takes us, I will be there for you wholeheartedly. With this ring, I wed thee. Jane, please accept this ring as a symbol of my love for you above all others. It's my promise that wherever our journey takes us, I will be there for you wholeheartedly. With this ring, I wed thee. Carlos said as he slipped the ring onto Jane's finger. Jane, please repeat after me. Queen Clarion said, Carlos, please accept this ring as a symbol of my love for you above all others. It's my promise that wherever our journey takes us, I will be there for you wholeheartedly. With this ring, I wed thee. Carlos, please accept this ring as a symbol of my love for you, above all others. It's my promise that wherever our journey takes us, I will be there for you wholeheartedly. With this ring, I wed thee. Queen Clarion smiled as she looked at the two of them. Do you, Carlos, take Jane to be your wife, to love and cherish forever? I do, Carlos nodded. And do you, Jane, take Carlos to be your husband, to love and cherish forever? I do, Jane said, her smile growing with every minute. Then, by the power vested in me, I now pronounce you husband and wife, Queen Clarion said. You may now kiss the bride. Jane and Carlos's lips met in a tender kiss as the crowd applauded. In a blink of an eye, the guests were brought to the reception area courtesy of Fairy Godmother. And now it's time for the bride and groom to have their first dance as a married couple. Lonnie called from the DJ booth. Carlos chuckled. How'd you get Lonnie to agree to do this? It was one of her stipulations, actually. Jane said, shaking her head. She told me, Jane, I love you, and I'll do anything for you, but I'm going to be honest. Your taste in music is questionable at best. And I'm not going to lie. She might be right. But I thought Diego was going to play with his band. He is. But Lonnie's also a DJ. For the first dance between us as husband and wife? Yes. Carlos chuckled. Okay then. Calling the lovebirds, 
Please take to the floor before we get ancient. Lonnie called, causing Jane and Carlos to chuckle before going out in the centre of the dance floor. Wise men say only fools rush in, but I can't help falling in love with you. You look beautiful, by the way. Carlos whispered as he held Jane close to him. I'm sorry I didn't get the chance to sew so earlier. I think you were a little busy, Jane chuckled. Shall I stay? Would it be a sin if I can't help falling in love with you? Like a river flows, surely to the sea. Darling, so it goes, some things are meant to be. Fairy Godmother smiled as she watched her daughter and now new son-in-law hold each other close as they danced for the first time as husband and wife. Hard to believe the day is here. Lumia whispered to her. I know, she whispered back. It seems like it was only yesterday that Jane was a baby in your arms. And now she's a grown woman, married to a wonderful man. Think we should give them their wedding present now? Let's wait a bit, Fairy Godmother said, with Beast, Roger and Cinderella assisting. Lumiere and Fairy Godmother had saved up enough money to buy the newlyweds a home of their own. Far away enough from their respective parents slash parental figures to live their own lives, but close enough that they've always got someone available. You know, in the event they needed a babysitter. What? Fairy Godmother was a fairy, not made of stone. Take my hand. Take my whole life too, for I can't help falling in love with you. No, I can't help falling in love with you. Carlos and Jane came to a stop as the music faded, Carlos gently placing a kiss on Jane's head. The rest of the reception went off without a hitch. Diego's band happily played for the rest of the night, with Lonnie DJing whenever the band needed a break, meaning Jay was able to get many a dance in with his wife. And, of course, everyone seemed to enjoy the rainbow cake with chocolate ganache and icing. Carlos and chocolate were as synonymous as mal and strawberries, after all. But before they knew it, the night came to a close and the bride and groom found themselves in their new home. I can't believe your parents gave us a house, Carlos said softly as they laid down on the bed. I can, Jane smiled as she curled up next to him. Gods, how perfect was today. Everything went off without a hitch. Hey, the first perfect day of our marriage has been a good thing. Carlos told her, and Jane found that she had to agree. Go, dude, be! Carlos chuckled as the two aforementioned animals almost dive-bombed into the bed, Carlos having gotten a new kitten a couple of months ago and named her Beelzebub II. Jane could only chuckle. If this was going to be her life now, she couldn't ask for a better one. End of chapter. Hi guys, hope you enjoyed that one. Oh my god, I'm almost crying. That was so beautiful. Ginny, you are an artist. How did you freaking know that was one of my favourite songs of all time? I'm using it for my favourite Descendants couple for their wedding. Oh my god. I hope I did it justice with my singing. I have sang that song more times than is healthy for the physical human being. Oh my god, that was so gorgeous. Her bibbitying the dress, Queen Clarion of Pixie Hollow being the officiant, and mentioning the broken wing thing because of her love story with Lord Mallory. Gee, 
is, you do not skimp on the details, do you, Ginny? Oh, I loved that. I love that so much. Oh, my God. I'm, I'm very emotional right now, guys. I'm really, really happy. I hope you guys enjoyed it again. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. And hit that bell to get notified whenever I upload a new video. Have a good day, night, or whatever time zone you're in. Bye, my guys, girls, non-binary pals. I'll see you in another video. I have to go before I start crying.